on to all this, and yeah, it's Mofa Fred coming back here, and he's facing off against Chen Z, both junglers who I think we really need to watch out for because they're very keen on getting that uh, jungle control and advantage in terms of the farming. But who, how efficient will oh. our XP laners be in the early game, in the early skirmishes? Because if you were to look at the glue up against an Arlo, what are your thoughts about this matchup? Uh, I mean, uh, the glue against the Arlet is a matchup where, you know, I think for the Arlet mainly, you don't really want to go for any trades here. All you want to do is farm up, wait for level 4, and then participate in the fights. Yep. I think most of the fights we're going to see in the mid lane. This is a very aggressive Lu Yi high loss against a very aggressive Cho and Aurora too. So it's all about the mid lane here, and you can already see that lethal ignition and bargain hunter. Man, uh, Hoon is going for that snowball for sure. He's doubling down on the early game power of uh, the Loyi. Yeah, and how will Hoon create all this space, especially with the Loyi, one of the best mages who you could rely on in terms of uh, doing that. So they can really take Ulfin Nar by surprise every now and then, whenever they want to. But then another thing I think we have to really watch out for is Zia once again showing us another Granger gold. Earlier, it wasn't as successful, but all things considered, the lineup right now that Bloodthirsty Kings have decided to field for this game, it seems like it could be a little bit more coordinated in terms of whenever they want to pick the team fights. Mm -hmm. It's also much better as a front-to-back composition. Well, thanks, good read on that. Ooh. It's a Chun Pu out here. And I do want to talk a bit more of the Arlet pick, right? Because the Arlet is something we don't really see too often nowadays, but with the Fredrin in the jungle, yeah. it does make sense for you to go for the Arlet. You get so many resets. Starts to be caught, pops in revitalized, goes over the sun, the final slash will connect on the Tianzi. Full lock up there, first blood for Hoon. That was unfortunate, the sustain was still there for Shark. He had his revitalized ready, and now Ulfinar, they lost one member just right before this turtle, but it seems like they're still staying aggressive as ever, trying to disrupt Moazine from getting his purple buff, but still he'll be able to get it either way. So we may potentially see that once Chen Z gets hold of his purple buff, will they try to still attempt for this turtle contest? I guess we'll see. Apex is walking up, no look for just yet, so no way of the dragon. Goes in for a bit of damage. Immersion into the back right now, full flank with the glorious pathway down. Who gonna be able to put up some damage as Alien goes over his split. Zane still looking for the retreat. Chen Z walking up as well, it's a 50-50. Jiku no over, retreat Mova Zane wins it up. The split split onto him, now mounting Moba Zane. Shark in the midst of it all, still caught there. Just a good way to drag it to bring him back. And that's going to be Tianzi picking up the kill now as Hoon goes in for the Yinian reaction. But Apex 47 dives in and Chicken will be able to flicker out for now. Alien gets the immobilize, forcing Chicken to go for the vengeance. And Apex takes him down. Bloodthirsty Kings, they get hold of the turtle. But I believe Ulfinar, they're really happy with the trades that they got. Bloodthirsty Kings, they were able to create that proper zoning. They were able to look for the members. They were able to zone out Rosa. But they gave Ulfinar enough time to actually regroup and for Tianzi to even catch up to that team fight. He didn't go straight to the turtle right after securing his purple buff. He was also trying to get his orange buff, but even then he left it. He said, all right, I'm just going to join and that rewarded Ulfinar a lot. Definitely did. They just played it super slow. They wanted to get the mount before going in. That's the thing, right? When you're up against the Spreadgen on the Joy, you want to come in as the Assassin. You need to come in last. If you come in early in the fight, there's so much CC from BTK. And you can already see it over to Apex, Gen Z. Walking up now over to Hoon. That's a frigid Glacier to set up for the Electrifying Beats. On to Zia now. Apex getting a good kick over, but the Purify gets him out. Zia still cutting away. Apex very low. Shark unable to go and march in forward. Zane will be able to get some damage down onto Alien, but that's about it. I feel like this entire situation is becoming something Ulfinar really consistently takes advantage of. Their early rotations coming in from their XP lane and the information that they're able to get immediately, but that's a trade. They take Apex 47. So I don't think they'll be as aggressive towards this bottom lane anymore. Like it's a kill, right? It's good for Zia, but it was also great for Sunshine. He got almost the entirety of the turret gold there down below. And we saw how the Bruno matchup against the Granger played out just earlier. So mm -hmm. again, that's going to be quite concerning, you know, giving Bruno gold in the early game once he gets the Melfic <laughs> gun. Oh, I don't know, man. Sunshine, he might actually be able to rival Mr. Siggy Boom as, you know, the Turkish Trigger Man. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I mean, earlier we saw towards the late game, at least three basic attacks being enough to take out the late game Granger, and I think Orzing Zia 
going for the exact same emblem combinations even, but who will be able to take hold of this turtle? Both teams are able to see each other right now. Double advantage, that's a G. Kudoma, Mobu Zane gets it. The last hit over with skill one in the red tree. Chicken walks in with vengeance, and Alien will just disengage. Neutral objective control for BTK. I think Mobile Zane's here to remind us of how reliable the Fredrin is when it comes to getting these yep. objectives. That's a second consecutive turtle that uh, Mobile Zane was able to secure for his team. So I think regardless of uh, the uh, more successful engagement, Whoa. hold on, Rosa will be able to get out of this! Whoa! Close, very close, has to use the flicker. And Apex will be able to grant him some safety up top. Chicken will be able to survive this, there's no real kill threat here. Bottom lane, Sunshine. that's a diversion, Sunshine gonna be caught, Hoon missing out the Indian reaction, but Zia gets the last hit, Apex with the way to drag, but the Vitalis gets popped in by Shark, and now Apex is forced back. They have uh, essentially already shut down Sunshine, now yep. they're gonna get a shove down, and what, are they gonna look to group? That was a really quick response from BTK though. Like, the moment they knew there were two members trying to actually get some of White Chicken's attention, Ooh. an immediate diversion towards the bottom lane, and a very great or a rewarding kill that they could secure up against a Sunshine, who earlier we mentioned, he's just getting all the farm. He's going unnoticed, but now Bloodthirsty Kings, they're paying attention as well. So they want to shut down these winning conditions for Ulf and Nar. And we also haven't paid much attention to how Bloodthirsty Kings, they're actually showing some slightly better control in terms of taking the conversions in objectives of the turrets. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing a much better job so far here. Only the turret gold really going to Ulfednar, right? But in the mid game, late game, getting these turrets, that's what's important here. Not just that turret gold. And Zia is already being swapped up mm -hmm. top. Let's see how they get this. Zia is getting three hits down. Doesn't look like Ulfednar won't walk and Moba Zane doing a good job on this Fred. That's Moba Fred for you. <laughs> I can uh, imagine how uh, hyped up those uh, former Frederick users are right now. Or do we really call them former? Because either way, I think we're gradually seeing a uh, increase the number of Frederick appearances. Who knows? This might not be the first or the, the last time we'll see the Frederick here in M6. And this is the third and wow. last turtle that, compared to the first two, Ovenar won't be contesting anymore. Perfect turtle for the Bloodthirsty Kings. Three for three, and now they play the slow game. They're just waiting for them, for Zia, I would say, right? To get to those item power spikes. It does seem like for Hoon, he should be already on it. So, I don't know, man. It's it's just a slow game at yeah. this point, right? They just want to outrange Ulfetnar, and they want to appeal for Zia. Yeah, and it's Protect nice. Protect Mr. President. It's nice to see, like... Bloodthirsty Kings gradually adapting to this kind of a play style. We know for one that if it was Fly Chicken we're talking about, the eager one to make the plays, the one who wants to go for those really aggressive XP laners, but it seems like they're adjusting really well to this high loss XP gameplay that the they're horse. showing us. They're really able to protect the key members we are actually watching out for here in BTK oh. and pick the right team fight. It's King of. All right, that's another diversion play. They do up top. So right now, the problem for Ulfidnar definitely is how could they expect all these team fights that will come from BTK? And now that they, they're they struggling to get the pickoffs, they're struggling to get the way of the dragon towards who oh. towards Zia. But speaking of that's at the tip though. Great final slash in the flanker. Now Rose is going to be caught. Fight Chicken just staying on him. The way to dragon appeal, but now the vengeance and the last shot. Rosa is down. Sunshine gets a trade in the bottom lane. That's a tier one, but still, Bloodthirsty Kings definitely leading here. And I don't know, Brigida, but BTK, this team finally coming back on stage. Yep. The color scheme, the stage. It really, I don't know, this tournament feels a whole lot like M3, man. You can see Chicken walk up again, get in the final slash, fading out the Purify as well. Who can be targeted down by Tianzi, but he's still able to get the Indian reaction and get some shielding, and he will be able to escape for a bit. Who can do the shielding again? Oh, the stun coming in, Tianzi! Outplayed by Hoon and Shark with the Revitalize, and now it's a full dive of Razor's Wrath from Moba Zane. Chicken going for the kill, and that's a stab from Moba Zane. He will be taken down. Chicken gets out, though, and it becomes a great trade for BTK. That's a two for one, and they only lose their tank jungler and they immediately convert and take out some of the remaining resources from Ulfidnar as well BTK they're that much ahead that Hoon has the liberty to just throw out all those 
all those combos to get those shields and sustain these attempts from TNZ. It's not something you would typically see for a Joy who's able to isolate his key targets. But just with Shark beside Hoon, he was able to sustain everything. And this might be a very difficult situation for Ulfinar if they do want to go after this Lord. TNZ though, he's one level... Uh, oh no, he is one level ahead of Mobazine. Mm-hmm. You still, you still have the clear speed, right? Way better clear speed compared to a uh, Fredrin. The only reason Zane is able to actually be just one level down is because he got three turtles. Yep. If we didn't get the three turtles, maybe we would see like a three level dip for uh -huh. Tianzi here. But hey, now he's uh, he's equal actually to Tianzi. He will be on the Lord. They're actually playing with the Moba Zane walking up. Mm -hmm. Gotta go for a bit of a trade here. The Lord has been taken very low. A quarter of its HP. Z is still holding on to it. The Lord Dance is a bit tricky nowadays. Oh. The diversion into the top. Alien's gonna be caught a full dive into Tianzi. Has the damage. Electrifying oh, no. B. Sia. That's a bad spot to be in. Sia assassinated. Now Shark mounted on as well. Moba Zane, unfortunately, unable to survive. Sunshine go for the free hits now as he is free hitting the entire fight. Shark will fall as well. Sunshine with a double. Hoon. Purify now, Sunshine with a chase, TNZ very low, White Chicken waiting in the bush again as Ofetnar take control of the game through Sunshine and the Bruno. That, that might have not been the best target here for uh, Bloodthirsty Kings, or probably if we were to like rewind it a bit, it seems like they were really trying to go after TNZ, but they did not have as much idea that Alien was also there, that Ulfidnar, they were already all around that area trying to position themselves prior to this Lord, and unexpectedly, they will be able to take hold of it instead. So it's Bloodthirsty Kings who will be having to defend for this first Lord. But definitely, they will have the resources, they have the range to do so, but Ulfidnar, they wouldn't want to miss this opportunity to at least attempt and even out the map. Definitely, Ulfed Nara, you know, the way that they have been able to utilize the Bruno in the wild card. We've seen how brutal Sunshine can be on this Bruno, and so far he's been farming, waiting for that item power spike. I wonder if he has the Melfic gun already. I'm gonna have to check real quick, and he does so. Melfic gun power spike online now for Ulfed Nara. It's a battle of the front to back, honestly, at this point, right? TNZ will have more ways to actually try to assassinate some of the members from BTK. But Ulfednar is front to back. It's kind of a different version. BTK plays the front to back with a lot of frontliners. Ulfednar played a front to back with a lot of assassin backline threats. Yep. So Tianzi essentially becomes kind of a distraction. Yeah. So that Sunshine can and can free hit like we saw earlier. Yeah, and for Apex 47 to actually find the right targets this time around. I mean, they can be slightly more aggressive compared Whoa. to earlier, but they decide to go for the diversion towards the purple buff. Rosa gets caught, Apex gets away with Dragon now, and Sunshine is completely zoned away. Apex with a flicker out, Alien split, split to escape, and it will just be a one for zero. The Lord advantage from Wolf Ednar, they were able to get some turrets, but BTK fend off the tier two in the mid lane. Honestly, those uh, diversion, those very decisive diversion plays can either go like really good or really bad Damn. for BDK and uh, that was an example of a really good diversion play and as much as they probably had an idea that majority of the members of Ulfidnar were there it's also probably Ulfidnar not expecting that they'd actually teleport there and pick Agreed. a fight. It's a tough plan to go for like Brother C we saw the gold lead immediately just disappear with one wrong diversion yeah. but one good diversion can turn the entire game around. Yeah. For BTK though, they don't actually need to rely on the Diversion that much. Mm -hmm. They can actually just play the normal front to backs as long as they keep Zia intact and as long as they actually save some of their CC abilities for Tianzi. This Joy is going to have a tough time diving yep. into BTK. Yep, and honestly that's the play that has continuously punished these attempts from uh, Ulfid Nar. The uh, t proper timings of the final slash, but they find Alien! Alien just got this integrated sunshine, sniped down, that's a nano! Almost threading the needle, Apex 47 able to body block. But we're getting to a point in the game where the range is starting to play a big factor. Just like in game one with Innocent on the Granger, now it's Zia on that Granger. Yeah, and I mean, even if they decide to like take on these fights head on and right in front of these members, that's like increased accuracy for those skill shot based uh, skills for from BTK to actually connect towards Ulfinar. And as we've seen it earlier, that's Alien, one of the tankiest heroes from Ulfinar. But he surprisingly just disappeared in the blink of an eye. So BTK, they may co take control of this Lord Pit. And could this be a much more successful attempt at taking the Lord compared to earlier? They gotta play with the poke. I think, you know, they have all the tools to make it better than before. They just gotta play with Zia and Hoon. They have so many ways to chunk Ulfednar low before the fight even happens. Because for Ulfednar, it's really all about engaging. It's really all about destroying that front to back. 
if you poke them out of these fights, they might not even be able to do that. And you can see with Whoa. the advantage they have in the side lane, yeah, Will Fender will have to deal with the mid lane, will have to constantly rotate into the bottom lane later on as well. BTK have the control. Mm -hmm. Three members are just hiding here in the left mid bush, but it seems like they have a different plan in my sunshine! Oh, we're gonna be caught in the flanks! Hoon with a diversion that might have just won them the game. Tianzi in the midst of it all, Tainzi seed. It is the mount on Shark, but you do not mount a horse without getting tapped down by the man who plays the horse. Fly Chicken takes him off. Alien is down. Apex will be forced to recall and BTK get the two for one. And that clearly is a win for BTK here. Will they proceed with taking the Lord? Because some members seem to be running after TNZ uh -oh. right over here, but TNZ will still take him on. Great electrifying beats and the winner crown too. Oh, now it's Rosa who walks in forward. TNZ again. Taken down before he can go for the kill. Now Apex looking for the play. Goes over to Jeet Kune Do, just buying a bit more time. And BTK will be forced back because of the damage that TNZ has done. And you said it. They bought time. They bought enough time. Sunshine is now back in the game. But that's a quick diversion once again. Will they find Apex 47? They do. But he gets to Jeet Kune Do out. So they regain control of this Lord, and now that TNZ is gone, they will clearly take it for themselves. Not unless Ulf and Nar, they still want to attempt and take on a team fight. No, way too dangerous. Good glorious pathway, and BTK take the Enhanced Lord in the 16th minute of the game. That's Boba Fred for you, getting the neutral objective. And now it's back to where they started when they had that gold lead. 2.6k gold lead over to BTK as they build this Lord advantage. We're seeing a very systematic gameplay once again from Bloodthirsty Kings, but in some parts, a uh, slightly experimental approach towards playing the game as well. We're looking at really good uh, gold in the hands of me key members of BTK right here. Hoon, you mentioned it, he's already completed all of his items compared uh -huh. to Rosa clearly struggling right now and trying to position himself as the Aurora. It seems like He's been a consistent target for BTK ever since the beginning of this game, but Whoa. Hoon, wow. Wow, that, that was a crazy <laughs> diversion take from Hoon. I didn't think he would take it, but you know, he does. He knows that there were a lot of people there to help him out. Oh, TNC was looking for a flank, gets caught out and spotted out. He will just go to the purple buff. I don't know, BTK will... Uh, no, they won't chase TNC. Yeah. They're just going to play with the Lord and maybe look for the Lord charge, but no. They're actually taking it super slow. Won't we'll play for the Lord. The Lord gets taken down. Sunshine deals with it. They'll steal the purple buff away. Oh. Now Apex has chained CC, but he does have the Shun Poo. So, yeah, uh, it becomes a kind of just... It's an equalizer. Now yeah. they are on the same amount of turrets. Yep, honestly, I feel like uh, we're seeing some, or BDK having some uh, second thoughts as to whether or not should they be reacting to the uh, pressure that TNZ is trying to create in this kind of situation against uh, BTK where they're clearly trying to catch up. But that's one of the uh, strengths that you'd probably consider for this kind of assassin jumper, for the joy. Like the mobility it has, the ability to close gaps or even just run away from these members of BTK and create or control the macro all by himself. It's one thing that uh, could probably distract BTK from doing whatever they want to do, for doing whatever by the book attempt they want to proceed with in closing this game. But Apex 47 and even can see he comes in from behind. Mm -hmm. Alien trying to split them up. Zia still kiting away. Moba Zayn able to sustain back up, but Alien won't be able to do the same. Oh, it's a battle of the frontliners, and Zayn is on that Fredrin. So tanky and sustainable. It seems like those uh, sandwich plays aren't really working uh, nope. for the matches we've seen uh, today, at least. Nope. That's a three-man knockup, though, but the immediate oh. first down! For Chicken with the final slash finding, and the Appraiser's Wrath to combo it in. Tenzi's in the midst of it all as a joy. Gets the electrifying beats, the winner crown and the immortality by. But now oh. Tenzi able to escape. Moba Zane oh. walks back up, trying to go for the kill. Oh. And it's Sunshine with a triple! to save Ovetnar in game number one in this best of one. And this is no joke. I just want to say, I lost track. We were already 19 minutes into this game. So the death timers, they're actually quite long. They're oh. actually extending the game to this point. And Tianzi with the high electrifying beats, will he be able to catch Shark? Oh. Not just yet, but still dashes in. Oh. Fortunately, there's the glorious pathway, but man, this is already an almost a 20 minute game. It's coming to a point where we're gonna see one big fight and then we're gonna see the end here. Oh, Fednar defending it. And now, 
They're going to go for the Lord. This is an evolved Lord, so it's going to be a bit tougher for BTK to oh deal with, and there's absolutely no chance they get to contest this. That's a free Evolve Lord over to Ulfednar. This is actually devastating. Bloodthirsty Kings for the entire 18 minutes or so. Having complete control, actually making Ulfednar kind of be, become so unsure of whether or not they actually want to position themselves in certain areas because Bloodthirsty Kings, they have this tendency to really be first in terms of taking control of these brushes, but then in the blink of an eye, Ulfid Nar just relying on Sunshine's late game capability. Now we're seeing them being the more aggressive team. Bloodthirsty Kings, they have to defend this. But how reliable is their wave clear exactly when it comes to this point in time? Good question. That's a really good question to ask. Is the Granger going to be able to actually poke down the Lord enough for it to stop the siege? Because with Fedner, they should have ways to actually zone BTK away and for Sunshine to just get some free hits onto the turret. If he does get that those hurts. free hits. Oh, Tianzi is melting Mobile Zayn down. Oh, but just a quarter of HP left. Force Yuzi appraises Wrath and the Evolved Lord will be able to charge down. That's a base through it taken down up top. Mobile Zayn is going to be very careful with this Fredrin. BTK, they're able to fend off for now. They will be able to defend, but there are going to be some more waves in the mid lane. Oh, Fednar will not push forward. They will be happy with the base turret taken down up top. If Tianzi hurts that much against Moba Zayn, how much more if he gains access to, to Zia, to, to Hoon, to the other less tanked members of BTK at this point? Because if we were to look at the item build, this pretty much explains why Tianzi is starting to hurt so much. Yep. He's full build. He also picked up both the Holy Crystal and the Divine Glaive. And if ever he wants to create some crazy plays, some surprising plays, he can go for it. He has the Winter Crown in his arsenal as well. The Winter Crown is such a good tool to have on the Joy. Because the Electrifying Beast, I mean, with the new Winter Crown, it still comes out, right? So yep. you're dealing damage yep. with no risk at all while you're in the middle of the fight. And BTK, I think they've been kind of overconfident a lot of times, just sitting on the Electrifying Beast. I know you got the Athenas, I know you got that Radiant Armor, but hey man, it's better not to take that damage when he's on you. Better to actually move back again. I understand though, they yep. want to try to just go for him right as he gets out yeah. of the Winter Crown. Unfortunately, Sunshine's there too, right? Tianzi's not the only damage dealer. If you stick like that, Sunshine's gonna get that world E down. He's going to be able to get those free hits. And that's why we've seen Sunshine be the assassin, funnily yep. enough, right? He's not the main damage dealer. Tianzi's been the one chunking them low, but Sunshine's uh -huh. been getting the balls down. Yep, I really I'm really glad you mentioned that because for the uh, first or for at least the entire game almost that we've been seeing, it's this teaming up together. It's this five-man rotations that have been really benefiting Bloodthirsty Kings. But at this point in time where Ulf and Nar, they can also do the same. They can rely on their team fight capabilities to its fullest. Will it still be the same story for BTK this time around? Because if they decide to stick together, Tianzi, he can just reach more targets. He can just dash through oh. more targets. And Sunshine with the worldie, he can just look for oh. the free hits indefinitely. But Tianzi, wait, wait. No! BTK get the diversion and Tianzi evaporates. 22 minutes in, that might be the play to win the game. Apex trying to open up the map now as Rosa goes in for the zone. Lord should be free. Tianzi down for 47 seconds. That's no joke. For 23 minutes in, the death timers are no joke. But it seems like Ulfednar, they still want to take on this fight. Apex 47 poked very low, but that's a flicker from Alien. And he's isolated, oh. he's alone. And fight Chicken though. Mm -hmm. Trying to escape, we'll be able to flicker out there. It seems like Ulfednar is doing a great job right now, holding on to it. The Glorious Pathway popped down already. Apex 47 going for the stun right now onto Mobus Zayn. Will he be able to get it with the Way of the Dragon as well? Mobus Zayn still with the Retribution. Apex Immortality down. Sunshine with a Purify. The final slash brings him into Zia's gunshots. The Yin Yang reaction will get Hoon a double. And now Ulfetner will have to defend against the Fall Lord of BTK. While Sunshine is yet to return for nearly a minute. So Bloodthirsty Kings, they're really picking up the pacing. They want to make as much use of this Lord that they've secured for themselves. This is an evolved Lord. And definitely you'd want to stick together this time. This is the moment you'd want to stick together and really stay by the Lord's side. But wait a minute! Winter Crown into Winter Crown into the Immortality. Tianzi buying some items. But is it going to be enough? Tianzi down! Who gets a killing spree? Apex with the Conceal, Zia with the Sky oh, Forcer. It's a diversion again to flank Ulfednar. Rosa pops in the Frigid Glacier, trying to survive the Sky Piercer. That's one stack on the board. Apex buying a lot of time, but it is not going to be enough as Chicken gets rid of him. 
Bloodthirsty Kings, BTK is back on the world stage. A wipeout before securing the game. The return of BTK. Moba Fred.